Hi everyone, this is Mary Blocker from Mary's Stampin' Cafe, and I am so glad to be here to share with you a fantastic specialty class that I'll be having in July. I try every month to have a specialty class, which includes five projects, four cards, and one mystery special project, which isn't a card. It's usually a packaging thing, or a 3D project, or home decor, something like that. And it's always so much fun to focus on a stamp set or something special. And July is not left out. Oh, I'm so excited. The Garden Bird Houses Watercolor Specialty Class. Here is the beautiful Garden Bird Houses stamp set. I absolutely love it. I'm very, very inspired um, out in my yard. Just all of the birds and the sounds and the chirping. Um, I have my hummingbird feeders and they are going crazy for that. But this is the Garden Bird Houses stamp set that all of the projects will revolve around. And participants in the specialty class have a couple options. But everyone who registers for the class will get the water painters by Stampin' Up. There's three water painters in a package. There's two different brush tips and then a wide tip um, for great watercolor washes. And you will get then your supplies, your project kit for five projects. That all together is a $25 class. You can do that in person with me on Sunday, J July 25th if you're local, or you can choose the to-go option. The to-go option simply adds some shipping on top of the project kit. Now, if you want to include the Garden Bird Houses stamp set, that's a $20 additional charge for the stamp set, bringing that to $45. Um, I have a beautiful flyer right here. I'll put down below in the link the uh, registration form that you would fill out if you wanted to do this class. So I wanted to just take a moment and share that with you today because I do not want you to miss out on this. I only have a limited number of project kits available and deadline to register is July 16th. So today, of course, I'm going to be making a project with the Garden Bird Houses. I absolutely love this time of year with all of the birds and everything. So let's take a look what we're going to use today for our card. I have beautiful balmy blue, cut at five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. I have a piece of basic white for the inside of the card. I have a piece of basic black and oh, from our Pansy Petals DSP, which I love, the gingham. And I love that this gingham is. Um, focusing on that pale papaya. It's such a pretty soft color. I wanted this black just to be an accent, so I cut that uh, just one eighth larger than the five by three and three quarters. So it's five and an eighth by three and um, seven eighths. So there we go. And then I have three that we're going to use, little squares that are cut at one and a half by, um, oh gosh, two, yes, that's right, one and a half by two that they're going to go on this card. And what we're going to do here is we're going to be stamping and doing some water coloring. So you can find all of the products and things at my store at maryblocker.stamping.net, stampinup.net. I also do have double loyalty bucks happening right now through June 30th using um, this host code and I will give you double loyalty bucks for shopping with me. Now I'm going to take these pretty little bird houses and I'm going to stamp one in each of our squares. Well, our rectangles, right? There's, oh, I don't like that. It didn't seem to get the whole thing. Sometimes stays on is quite sticky. That's a much better image of that one. I especially like this birdhouse. It's kind of the rounded one. I really like that one. And then our third birdhouse is a very tall birdhouse, which is very fun too. Now this stamp set has the um, pole that you would put on if you were hanging. Um, oh, I kind of stamped it up high. Let me come down a little bit on that. If you were gonna be um, planting that bird house to the ground or there's a little um, 
like string stamp so the birdhouse can go and hang from a tree. But we're not gonna do that today. Now I'm gonna let this stays on, stays on just kind of cure in there a little bit. And I'm gonna bring in my Pale Papaya DSP. Now, what I wanted to do is I love the branch in the stamp set. This one right here. It reminds me of um, some other branches that we do have that I love, and so it makes sense that I, I love that. Now, I'm using the soft, new in color soft succulent, but I don't want it to be too dark, so I'm gonna stamp off, and then I'm going to stamp right onto that DSP. I just want it to be a faint, a faint um, image on here. And I'm just gonna go halfway. I'm not gonna go all the way down. There we are. Do a little more right there. Just gives it a fun little something. There we are. I might do a little Fill in those leaves here on the side. Even a little more at the top. There we go. Just wanted to give it that nice leafy background. All right, let's talk about our water coloring now. I have soft succulent refill, balmy blue refill. I have basic gray refill and pale papaya. Now, what I want to show you is that using the water painters, since that's gonna be part of the class, I'm gonna pull out just the smallest brush tip, um, especially because these images are small. I want to be able to, you know, control what I'm doing while I'm, I'm painting them. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with the, I'm gonna start with our basic gray. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do all of the roof details with it. You only need a couple drops of your ink refill and then of course your water's in the barrel and I'm just going to squeeze to get some drops of water and then that lets me pull out, oh I got a little little drop there somehow, lets me pull out and do a little bit of watering it down. Now we say when we watercolor you want things to be as wet as possible and if you want things to be a deeper color, then I say have it a little bit drier. So you can kind of make things darker in certain places where you want them to have some, some depth. So I'm just gonna go around just these edges. I'm pulling in that kind of, the stays on stamp, which is black. So I thought I would pull in that same black accenting this way. And this under here is going to be darker. It's being shadowed. Now that other part of the roof, I really want it to be light. So I'm going to really come in here and get it really wet. That diffuses that color. So now this is more just like a little bit of a gray charcoal. It's not so dark. It's much lighter and you can see that difference then just by adding more water. Now I would like for this bottom to be a little darker. So I can go back in with kind of just the refill undiluted. I'm going to do the same here. I want it to be a little darker. That's how you can get all those different perspectives and dimension. With your, um, with your images there. And you can see that now, you have all that different layers of color. Now, same thing here. I want these, these that are coming down. The, the little slats that are coming down there just to have some dimension. I'm also gonna give this part, well, right here. There we go, because that's the hanger part for that one. I want this one actually to be very, very washy as well. So I'll have it very wet. Now I am just using basic white. I'm not using watercolor paper. In the watercolor class, we'll be using quite a bit of watercolor paper for some of our projects. 
but for this one it's little spots and I'm not really you know wanting wanting it to necessarily have that beautiful watercolor look I'm using this more as just coloring than water coloring so less water where I want it darker more water where I want it lighter so there we go so that is the basic gray now all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna squeeze my tip of my brush and rub it along my mat and that cleans it off so I'll clean up this excess off of the block and then I'm going to bring in this one here and I'll go ahead and use my pale papaya and again I just need a little drop a little drop will do don't need a lot still have some of that black on here definitely don't want that let's get that all out of there all right now get that really washy and I'll come in now with my pale papaya it's a fun color it's bright Whoop. went out a little bit that's okay gives it that little rustic look I'll even come out a little bit more there we go I'll give it a little shadow there we are oh I was gonna do the door of that one and I want to give some of these a little bit deeper deeper color just to give it some depth there we go I'm gonna leave that to dry now I'll wipe that then we'll get our balmy blue. Drop my big drop on there. Ooh, that's beautiful. I do want to really dye this down though. Really dilute it down. I don't want it to be too, too, too dark. I'm gonna do this one. There we go. What I find about watercoloring using our refill inks I just feel like the colors become so much more vibrant with the water painters and they're just so pretty and again I'm kind of just doing a wash on here I'm not looking for perfection there we are that's it he's got some highlights and lowlights that's just fantastic and now our soft succulent squeeze out that blue there's that beautiful green isn't that nice again I'm really diluting it down now this is really really wet so I'll just go ahead and use that bring the color along with me let it soak into that paper now I do see a couple places. I'll even give this a little shadow, a little rustic messiness. Because when you watercolor, you know, you don't have to be all right in the lines. But I do see on here, boy, I used a lot, big drop of that, didn't I? I wanna come back with the basic gray. Just because I neglected, oh my goodness, I neglected this piece right here and the door. I'm gonna get it really, really wet because I don't want the door black. I just want it gray like the roof. There we go. And there's our three cute little birdhouses. I just, I just love it. So water painters are just fantastic. Again, I just used the thin line one, but you will get one that has a, a, a larger brush tip and then you'll get this fantastic one that we will use quite a bit for a beautiful watercolor washing. Um, it's a great wide flat brush. It's awesome. So those are the three pack aqua paint, uh, water painters, sorry. Okay, let's set that aside. Now let's bring our things over. All right. Oh, sorry, my little thing that moved here. Okay. Now the paper will curl just a little bit, but we don't need to worry about that. Now, I am gonna bring in our beautiful sequined, glittered black organdy ribbon. 
I know it seems a little strange, but again, using that black stays on and that little hint of black in our cardstock will just give it a nice, um, just such a beautiful effect. It, it really is. So I'm going to come around here and oh, there's that beautiful paper. Do, 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 do. Oh, I have to use my old tapes here. I have some new seal, but it is in a box, not opened yet. So I'm just going to come around like so. And now I'm ready to adhere this to the black cardstock. And it is just a shy eighth of an inch around. So you gotta make sure you're lined up because it just peeks right out of that outside that edge, right? Okay. Now our beautiful little guys are gonna come here along that ribbon line, like so. I feel like this particular, I've got one that's just a little bit longer, and I do, so that cutting of mine is not perfect. No. <laughs> Excuse me, goodness gracious. I'm just gonna come right here and do just a little, little snip. There we go. All right, I'm going to be putting dimensionals on the back of all three of these because they need to pop, pop, pop. <laughs> and there's those first attempts, right? That didn't work out so well. Now these are going to be going over that ribbon, so I'm not going to put one through the center. Because that ribbon does have a little depth to it and it would look a little strange. All right, I'm going to put my first one in the center. Put the other two on either side. Line it up. Perfect. And I do like the bit of greenery along there too. So there's that bit of that peeking out as well. Go ahead and take a look at what I'm going to have along the bottom. There is a stamp that says, hope each moment of your day is as special as you are. And I'm going to do that one along the bottom of this gingham here. That's why I didn't do the greenery along the bottom. All right, now let's bring in our soft succulent. I'm gonna ink this up and then I'm gonna test to see that I have this lined up correctly. Looks good. All right, let's ink this up really well. We're going to stamp this right here. Hope each moment of your day is as special as you are. And then, of course, we'll have our happy birthday on the inside. Now the inside of our car, there's this really cute little flower. 
little bunch of flowers. Right there. And then we're going to have our happy birthday stamp. Bring my happy birthday back. It's just about fits on this block, but almost doesn't. But we'll get it. It's birthday wishes. Let me just make sure I'm gonna get it all. Absolutely. This is a great font right here. Birthday wishes, isn't that fun? Now I went ahead and pulled my pale papaya marker and the soft succulent marker because they are featured on this card and I'm just gonna color in quickly these cute little petals of these flowers. How sweet that is. And then with the soft succulent, we'll get those leaves. I'm going to do the stems a little bit with it. How cute is that? Oh my gosh! I love it. I love this little sprig of flowers. So fun. There, that is. That really turned out cute, didn't it? It's just a fun, cute little card. I do have another one that I did earlier today, and I turned it the other way and did kind of just a fun little, fun little turn of it that way, and the same little sprig of flowers. And you know what? I need to do that sentiment inside this card. I didn't do that, so I will have to do that. Now again, this is my wonderful, um, just a little sneak peek of the wonderful Garden Bird Houses watercolor specialty class, including the water painters and a project kit with five projects included for $25, including the Garden Bird House stamp set with the project kit will be $45. And I'll have all the information below on my um, links that you can check that out. I love doing the monthly specialty classes, again, to focus on a stamp set and then all the different ways you can use that set um, for different things. So this is a lot of fun. I might add a little bit of uh, maybe some bling here and there, some little maybe um, some of our little sequins or something like that. I would have liked to been able to have another little knot over here somehow, but it just didn't quite fit. Um, and that's okay. But I really like stamping on that gingham background and I really appreciate you guys being here with me. If you liked what you saw today, give me a thumbs up if you would. Um, subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos, my specials, my giveaways. And July is heating up. I'm having a huge stamptacular, stamptacular giveaways in July. It was gonna happen in June, but some family things came up and it's now gonna be in the heat of the summertime, which is exciting. So thanks so much, you guys. Let me know which card you liked better. Did you like the horizontal or the vertical layout? Um, I'd love to hear what you think. So until next time, guys, happy stamping.